At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Alright, what do we have? Pack one, pick one, commence the end game. Pretty strong card. Six mana, draw two, a mass X. So this is more like draw two, make a 4 4 at instant speed. Still pretty good. What else do we have? Challenger Troll, nice payoff for the green high power deck. Tyrant Score, nice removal spell. Angrath is pretty versatile as well, can fit into a, a lot of decks. And then looking at the commons, what stands out? Uh, mostly the Band Together as a nice green removal spell. And then Heartfire can be okay in the Sacrifice red-black decks, or maybe as a finisher in any red aggro deck. Probably gonna go with Commands the Endgame here. Ooh. Well, Commands plays pretty well with Augur Bolas, since Augur Bolas can find or Commands the Endgame. Although, Augur is probably not a card we want to pick too highly, since if uh, we don't end up with enough instances or sorceries, then the Augur is gonna be a little bit weak, and it doesn't find Planeswalkers, which is uh, also a big part of Limited here. What else do we have? Narset, kind of similar to Augur Bolas, but can also find us Planeswalkers, so it has a wider range of cards it can find. Taskmaster is excellent as well as a 2-drop. We've got a Law Rune Enforcer as a great white 1-drop. And that's probably about it. Dismissal is okay too. Yeah, I think Enforcer overall is probably the best card in the pack. Doesn't go amazingly with commands, but it's fine. Uh, Taskmaster is pretty solid too, but this wants us to play more creatures, whereas commands plays better in a more controlling deck. Could go either way here, could also stick to blue with Narset or Augur. And if I were to pick between Narset and Augur, I think I would pick Narset just because it's a bit more versatile. Given the pack one pick one, I can be convinced to take Narset. It's close. My prowess is unmatched by my... Alright, now we kind of get rewarded here, since Merfolk Skydiver is excellent. And we could pivot into blue-green. Although there is also Spark Harvest, which is one of the better removal spells in the set at common. Which can destroy a creature or planeswalker for 5 mana, or we can sacrifice a creature and only play it for single black. Anything else that stands out in the pack? Uh, not really, I think it's between these two cards. Harvest, of course, plays well with Narset and kind of the controlling nature of the deck. Skydiver, the more powerful card when unanswered. And we already have Narset and Commence that both uh, work well with Proliferate. So the Skydiver would be pretty good. Yeah, let's take the, the Merfolk. Alright, and here is the Relentless Advance, which plays well with our Narset. As a non-creature spell that's still actually a creature, plays well with Merfolk Skydiver and Commence since we can make an even bigger mass zombie if we want to. Uh, Ugin's Conjurance is also very strong, since it plays well with our Skydiver. Nice mana sync in the late game. I think those are the main considerations here. The black cards are okay, but nothing worth switching colors for. And there's no amazing green card here. And there's a bully that's colorless, but we would take the Conjurant over it. So yeah, it's between Advance and Conjurant. Conjurant has a little bit more upside, I think, than Advance, even though Advance plays better with Narset. The main reason to take Advance would be for the synergy it has with Narset and other Spells Matters cards. Do have to keep in mind that it's not going to stay enormous if you cast a big Conjurant, since the opponent can kind of whittle it down by blocking with creatures, but then they're throwing away a lot of resources to deal with it, which is a good thing. So I think we'll take the Conjurant for now. Alright, it's a... Uh, Fifth pick Augur Bolas, although we haven't really picked up many additional instants or sorceries in the meantime. What else do we have? We could take an advance here, which would be great in our deck. Ashok's Skulker, 5 mana 3 5, that can become unblockable. Pretty expensive activated ability. And I don't think we're too interested in Teferi's Time Twist. So I think I like advance over Augur, since Augur has a pretty high fail rate, whereas advance plays pretty well with our entire deck. Alright, perfect. Contentious plan. Proliferate draw card, plays well with her entire deck, but there's also Tamiya's Epiphany, which is the better card draw spell, but of course doesn't have the proliferate angle. 4 mana scry, 4 draw 2. 
digs very deep. Both those cards would be great in our deck. Kazmina's Transmutation, not a great removal spell. It is one of the few answers to some of the bombs in the set, like the various Mythic Gods. And then I guess we should also mention Arlen's Wolf as a decent 3-drop as well, since we are probably going to end up blue-green, although we're not committed. We're mostly just blue for the moment. Yeah, we can probably pick up more plans in the future. I don't think we'll get as many Epiphanies passed to us, so I think we'll take Epiphany for now. All right, and there we go. There's our contentious plan. And there's also some mana fixing with Beacon and Gateway Plaza. Don't think we need to take those at the moment. Snow Escape can also be okay. Another answer to some of the bombs in the set. But a contentious plan seems great here. Ooh, wow. That's a late Flux Channeler. Eighth pick, perfect in this deck. Plays pretty much with all the cards that we have so far. Great alongside Contentious Plan. Uh, so yeah, easy pick up here. And this is our first pack where we didn't wheel much. That's too useful. Could take a return to nature as a sideboard card in case we end up blue-green. Could take like a battalion if we end up blue-white. Promotion also works well with the various proliferate cards we have, but overall isn't too powerful by itself. Could also keep red on the radar, but if we're building a proliferate deck, it plays much better with blue-white or blue-green, which has most of the proliferate synergies. Red doesn't really proliferate all that much. I think I'll take the battalion over the return to nature in case we end up white. All right, um, do we like Augur Bolas now? Still don't have a ton of targets for it, I guess a few. Finds Commands, Epiphany, Advance, Contentious Plan, and we might pick up some more. So it could be a playable card, but I do want to stress that we really need like at least 9 or 10 instances or sorceries in our deck for this to be a good card that finds a card consistently, otherwise it's uh, not something we want. Uh, don't think we need a Time Twist. Totally Lost can be okay, although it's pretty expensive interaction. So I think I'm okay taking the Augur now, it's kind of a speculative pick over Crocodile, Steady Aim and all these other cards. And now we can take a Time Twist, just in case I doubt we'll need it. So yeah, blue is definitely wide open this draft. Don't know yet if we're gonna be green or white as our secondary color. We can let the next pack determine which color we end up in. Take a Guild Globe for fixing. Well, I guess I'll take a Sergeant in case we need a curve filler. Wow, 14th pick, Contentious Plan. We even considered taking it over the Epiphany for a second. So yeah, blue is definitely the place to be. And uh, interesting pack. Our rare is Deliver Unto Evil. Choose up to four target cards in your graveyard. If you control Bolas Planeswalker, return those cards to your hand. Otherwise, an opponent chooses two of them. Leave the chosen cards in your graveyard, put the rest in your hand. So not a great card, since you're not going to have a Bolas Planeswalker very often. What else do we have? Ashiok can kind of be its own win condition sometimes. In a maybe more controlling deck. Don't think we necessarily need it in this deck, since we're trying to make big creatures with Contentious Plan and beat down that way. Don't really need Ashiok as much, although it could still be okay. There's Ralph's Outburst as a great spell. If we want to have a Red Splash or pivot into red-blue. Would play great with Augur Bolas and Narset. Of course we could take another Conjurant, which would still be excellent in our deck. What else do we have? Another Relentless Advance would be decent too. Um, Strix, not the biggest fan of the card. Uh, Thunder Drake is a lot better than the Strix. 4 mana, 2, 3. Whenever we cast a second spell each turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Drake, so it can get out of hand very quickly with cards like Contentious Plan, other cheap cantrips. So this would also be excellent in our deck. And I think those are the main considerations. Outburst requires us to move into another color, or at least splash red, which we're maybe better off not doing at the moment. Drake just plays well with her deck naturally, since plays well with Proliferate. We're gonna cast a lot of cheap spells with Contentious Plan in the same turn, so it's easy to grow it very quickly. So I kind of like the Drake here. And then hopefully we can wheel the Advance and pick that up as well. The 4-drops are going to be pretty stacked, but then we don't need to worry about our 4-drops anymore. 
Eh, we'll take the Drake. Alright, well, we might have found a reason to play white instead of green. Prison Realm, great card. Not particularly synergistic in our deck. Can find it with Narset, I suppose. But just an excellent removal spell. Uh, Divine Arrow, we can find with Augur Bolas, but otherwise, Prison Realm is usually better. There's also Kaya, if we want to go triple white. Could also be a nice top end removal spell, Planeswalker. But it's a bigger commitment than Prison Realm. Prison Realm potentially still splashable as well. And then in green, we've got some playable cards. Snare Spinner, Nurture can help us ramp, and Arlen's Wolf, but they aren't particularly synergistic with what we've got going on. So I think taking the Prison Realm's probably fine here. And then we'll see whether or not we end up in blue-white, blue-green, or if we splash one of the two cards here. And what do we have here? This is a pretty weak pack for us. Bond of Flourishing doesn't do a whole lot for us, since we have a lot of non-creature spells that we can't find with it. Uh, the white cards are pretty weak. Bulwark Giant is nothing special. Yeah, Charm Stray is the rat colony of the set, basically. Defiant Strike, pretty medium combo trick. Not a battalion, already have one in the sideboard that we might want to reconsider here. Timebreaker looks good, plays well with Proliferate, nice top end threat. We already have a Commence at 6, but playing 2 6 drops is not at the end of the world. I uh, don't think we need to take a Mana Geo too highly, so Timebreaker seems okay as kind of a curve topper. And there's another Contentious plan, but there's also Trusted Pegasus and Divine Arrow. Two excellent white cards. Don't think we're too interested in Price of Betrayal. If we take a white card, do we take a Divine Arrow or a Pegasus? Or do we stick to blue with Contentious Plan, which we might even wheel, for all we know. And we can probably pick some more up in future packs pretty easily. I think Pegasus has more upside than Divine Arrow. Divine Arrow, of course, plays well with Augur, if we are still trying to play that. Can find it with Narset. Pegasus is a more aggressive card. But our deck could maybe beat down. Do need to make sure to pick up some cheaper 2-drop creatures here to shore up our early game, which right now is a little bit lacking. I think uh, taking Pegasus is fine. Alright, another Narset and Augur Bolas pack. There's also Teos Light Shield, which plays great with all the proliferate cards we have so far. So I'm kind of leaning towards Light Shield here. Don't think we are in a spot where we want to take a Bond of Discipline. Looking at our curve, so Prison Realm, we're not often going to cast on 3. Conjurant is maybe a 2-drop, maybe a 3-drop, depending on how many Proliferate cards we have in hand already. And then we're not sure if we're going to play the Skydiver yet. Kind of liking the Light Shield, an extra creature that plays well with all the Proliferate cards we have, and can help us protect our life total and our Planeswalkers. There's some good green and black cards. In blue-white, there's no escape as a reasonable card, maybe for the sideboard, maybe main deck. In green, there's Grizzly, which is okay, although it doesn't play all that well in our deck since we have a lot of non-creature spells that are just instants and sorceries that we can't find with the Grizzly. Giant Growth has a combo trick. Probably just a no escape here. Ooh, that's a late Davriel. Pretty good card. I think we're interested in another Relentless Advance. This would be or fourth 4-drop, four which is probably where we want to be, more or less. Plays quite well with a lot of our cards. Could also consider Gateway Plaza for fixing. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure yet if we're gonna splash anything. Alright, we wield the Transmutation, as well as Ashiok's Skulker. Could take a Skulker if we wanted to, can help us pressure Planeswalkers. Although it is pretty mana-intensive to do so. Don't have many 5-drops. Otherwise, there's Transmutation as kind of a mediocre removal spell. Totally lost, I guess, is a consideration as well. Don't think we want a Defiant Strike. Yeah, our deck could use some removal. Although Transmutation's not ideal, since Transmutation doesn't even deal with some of the big MS tokens, since they're zero zeros with a bunch of plus one plus one counters, so Transmutation's not an answer to those. Yeah, it is best of three, so having the Transmutation in our sideboard could also be good if we're facing the gods. Could see taking it over the Skulker. Skulker's not particularly synergistic in our deck. Could see taking the Transmutation just to have one in the sideboard, even if we don't main deck it. Alright. Another advance. Topple the statue could be an okay sideboard card, I guess. 
doing a full play, three advances, since the other four drops seem better. I guess we could take the Strix, since we didn't pick up any two drops yet, but I don't really want to play the Strix. If we can pick up some Martyrs in white at two mana, those are probably better for the deck. Yeah, I guess we'll take the Strix for curve, but hopefully we don't play it. Could take a Griffin now, don't have any five drops yet. Seems okay. I'll take the Giants. Alright, could take another Battalion here. Yeah, I mean, Battalion, if we end up with a few evasive two drops, could be okay. Right now, this Agro Bolas isn't looking amazing. And if we end up blue-white, which it looks like, then uh, the Murfolk Skydiver is probably not going to be played, unless we want to splash green for it. So yeah, our early game is looking a little bit weak, and we could use a bit more interaction. The three drops are already pretty stacked. Don't know if we have room for another battalion. Probably need the interactive spell in Totally Lost. Eh, take another Augur here. Don't know if uh, we'll end up playing it. Alright, third pack, so what are we looking for? Good two drops that fit into our deck. More proliferate synergies and uh, more removal in general. And uh, we open another Flux Challenger, which is pretty decent. There's also a Nissa who shakes the world. But if we wanted to move over to blue green, we would have to give up on quite a few good white cards. Yeah, we could technically still pivot into blue green. How would our deck look like if we give up on white? We lose a Pegasus, which I don't think we can splash. We could still splash the Prison Realm. We lose a Light Shield. This one we didn't play anyway. Griffin's not the end of the world. Could still be reasonable to take the Nissa instead of the Flux Channeler. Does play quite well with Skydiver. And we can find it with Narset. There's definitely something to be said for Nissa here. Yeah, I don't hate it. It is pretty late in uh, the draft here to switch back to green. But it's not like our white is all that amazing outside of Prison Realm and Pegasus. And it might be worth it. Otherwise we would be taking a Flux Channeler, which uh, is also pretty strong. We got one eighth pick in the previous, or in the first pack. So who knows, maybe the Flux Channeler wheels again. Let's try it. Through this land, we are all connected. <laughs> Another Flux Channeler. Well, if you put it that way, I guess we'll take it. And now Bond of Flourishing looks a little bit better, still not amazing. Another contentious plan, hopefully wheels. Thunder Drake would also be excellent. But now another Flux Channeler, now that we lost all those three drops that were white. Picking up another Flux Channeler seems great. The Drake is not wheeling, but uh, I think our three drops now need more help than our four drops, since we already have Double Advance, Drake, Epiphany, which are all excellent. So I think we take the, the Channeler here. I guess there's a Laruna Enforcer, not the best card on the splash. Suppose we could take a Spellkeeper Weird, which would still be fine. Since we have a lot of instants and sorceries to return. Plays well with our card draw spells, our advance and our endgame, so I guess uh, the Weird is still fine here. Otherwise we could take the Spider as an okay early play. But I think Weird has more upside. And what do we have here? Alright, Callous Dismissal looks good. Just a nice cheap card we can play. Plays well with the Flux Channelers and all the Spells Matters cards and also makes an Amass token which we can proliferate onto. So I don't mind the Dismissal here. Don't think we need another Dam Breaker. Could take another No Escape. Could take a Return to Nature for the sideboard. Or we could take a Divine Arrow maybe on the splash. Although at this point we're basically mono blue with a little bit of green and a little bit of white. So taking the Divine Arrow might be okay. Like maybe we just don't play the Nissa after all since we didn't really get any great green cards in this pack. And I think I prefer the Divine Arrow over Dovin's Veto if we're taking a white card since we need more removal. So I think I'll take the Arrow and then we'll see how we want to build this deck. Ooh, the Wanderer. The Wanderer is sweet, does a lot of work against the red-green decks, prevents damage from burn spell, from fight spells as well, and uh, can take out multiple creatures, especially once we start proliferating. So I think we're moving back over to white now, and take this Wanderer over Divine Arrow. The only companion I need is my blade. 
And the light shield looks pretty appealing. And nothing too exciting here. Can take a force landing in case we want to bring in more flying removal. <laughs> and we even wield the flux channeler. Well, we've got a pretty good deck for it. So I guess we can kind of build our deck here. So yeah, these Augur of Bolas, we kind of want to play them since they're two drops to fit in our curve. But I'm not sure how good they actually are since we don't have that many instants and sorceries. Strix, hopefully I don't have to play. So let's take a look at our pile here. So I think Nissa's out. And didn't get punished since we wield the Flux Channeler, so... Got to Rare Draft for free. I don't think we need Battalion. Could play another Line Shield at 3, Pegasus at 3. Griffin maybe at 5. Could be better than Totally Lost. So this is how our deck looks like. Maybe we play Transmutation if we feel like we need it. I don't think Skydiver's happening. Even though we could splash green for it, doesn't seem worth it. So we don't need the globe, although globe is actually still fine with all these flux channelers. Just as a cantrip that uh, triggers channeler, another contentious plan would have been better. Let's take this. <laughs> and there we go, contentious plan. There is also Pouncing Lynx, which uh, now that we're back into blue-white, would be a good 2-drop. But I think now with Contentious Plan we can maybe make these Augur Bolas work and just hope that we don't miss too often. And I'll take uh, another Time Twists. Another No Escape could be useful, although there's another Pouncing Lynx. Not sure if we want the Totally Lost, could be cut. I like all the 4s. And the 3s are all pretty good. Narset is maybe cuttable, although plays well with Proliferate. Spellkeeper Weird is probably good enough. Conjurant is great. And not the biggest fan of the Strix. And then we may or may not play this No Escape in the main. Could put it in the sideboard and bring it in in the matchups where we want it. So this is with two Augur Bolas. How many instants and sorceries do we have? Six, seven, eight, and then we've got a uh, six drop here as well. So I think Augur Bolas is good enough as long as we keep all the instants and sorceries we currently have, which means the Spellkeeper Weird is decent and the Flux Channelers are pretty great too. Uh, maybe three is overkill and we just want two of them. And then Narset also gets to pick up Prison Realm, gets to find the Wanderer, so it is tempting. So I think we probably don't need the Bouncing Links at two even though we could use it as kind of a, an aggressive 2-drop to pressure slower decks that rely on Planeswalkers to win the game as maybe a sideboard option, but I think No Escape is probably a better sideboard option for us considering we have Double Augur and Narset as well. So we'll take that for now. And then I guess we got a Dovin's Veto as well. Don't know if we'll main deck this, probably not. Although it does counter Planeswalkers as well. So Dovin's Veto might be a better main deck card than No Escape, as it's a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to put Conjurant at 2 mana, since we have all these Flux Channelers, so we're often just going to play Conjurant on 2, if we have it in our opening hand, and then put more counters on it, thanks to all the Proliferate cards we have. So what if we cut one Augur? And then we need to cut two of these three cards. Alright, looks like the majority likes cutting Globe and Cura's Dambreaker. I think that's reasonable. Keep the land and uh, the Narset. Narset would play somewhat well with Globe as well, since we can find it. But playing 17 land seems safe. We still have enough non-creature spells here, I think, for the Flux Channelers to be good. Plays well with Narset. Prison Realm, Epiphany, Advance, Wanderer, Endgame. And then the mana distribution. Favoring blue, since we've got way more blue spells. Need double blue for a few of them. Yeah, we could maybe cut a land for a second Augur. I think that would be a little bit greedy. Don't want to have a hand with like two lands, an Augur, and a bunch of Flux Channelers that we can deploy in time. Alright, let's go first. Alright, no blue mana, but I think a keepable hand. As soon as we hit one blue source... We are off to the races, and we've got a Divine Arrow in the meantime to 
Make sure we don't die. Turn on Grazer, so our opponents are ramping, putting a land into play. And there's our islands, always had it. Alright, please don't miss Angra Bolas. Woohoo, wow. Well, definitely didn't miss. So turn 3 we can play Weird. Turn 4 we can Epiphany. So we're likely to hit our land drops. Yeah, let's go big or go home. Alright, so we've got our 1-3 in play, which can hopefully protect our life total a little bit. Can help us double block alongside the Weird. Oh wow. Our, our opponent drafted a Huatli High Toughness deck. That's nice. Alright, so we're getting high alerted on turn 3 here, or turn 2 actually, since our opponent was on the draw. Yeah, our opponent knows about our endgame now. It does get a little bit weaker once it's revealed to Agro Bolas, since our opponent can play around it, but it eh, still seems worth it. Alright, Flux Channeler, not bad, although there's not much to proliferate at the moment. So Augur goes after Watley. Could also play the Channeler, I suppose. But the weird blocks the Grazer pretty well. Alright, Ugin's Conjurant, how does that line up with Divine Arrow? It would just still kill it. I think we're just fine playing the Epiphany, dig for some lands. Not much value to get with the Flux Channeler at the moment. Don't have double blue for Narset yet. We do have a contentious plan, but nothing to really proliferate with. So I'm kind of liking putting all of them on the bottom. And hopefully just draw into some islands instead, since we also need double blue for commune. And then we probably want to put these like this. Alright, island, contentious plan, much better. So, we'll say go. Don't know how good the Huatli is in the opponent's deck, it looked pretty good with the turn 1 Grazer, but... Maybe she's not that amazing. Opponent attacks. Yeah, if the weird eats a pump spell, that's fine by me. Can block the conjurant, so it shrinks down by one here. And then take three. Divine arrow. So no damage dealt to the conjurant. So it's still a 3-3. Relentless advance is actually pretty good here with our channelers coming up. So I think I like uh, playing advance, attack with Augur on Huatli. And then next turn we can go Channeler plus Plan and make a giant zombie token. Could also play Channeler keep up Arrow, but we're not taking advantage of Proliferate. Alright, so far so good. Got some powerful plays lined up here. Let's see what our opponent can do in Nissa's Triumph to find some forests, that's acceptable. So not too interested in blocking at the moment. Can take six, opponent stays back, even better. They might have their own proliferate cards, so they don't want to trade Conjurant. Yeah, we can cast Endgame now, which is maybe better than anything else, considering we want to have a full hand. So we can attack with the zombie army. I guess this is a little awkward, so if we attack with the zombie army, let's say our opponent has a Gideon's Triumph, then casting commands the Endgame is kind of bad. And we won't have the zombie back on defense since it's going to be tapped. If we didn't have a zombie in play already, commands would actually be slightly better here. But I think I'm attacking still. Get this Watley off the board. And if they block, maybe means they have a Gideon's Triumph. Alright, they have a Gideon's Triumph, but they're casting it before blocks. In their spot, I would have tried to maybe bait out to commence the endgame. That's fine. And now we can just commence in the opponent's turn. Seems okay. Could also play both Flux Channelers, but when we cast commence, there's nothing to proliferate onto. So I'd rather just get my big creature into play to keep pressuring their Planeswalker. 
Loxodon Sergeant. A lot of mind games going on as well. Once there's some known information. Hmm, this is weird. So does our opponent have a giant growth? That's the only thing I can come up with here. Trade for Conjurance. Could also put the Augur Bolas in front and shrink it down. It is a bit of a waste to lose the zombie army when we have these Flux Channelers coming up. But we also have a Thunder Drake and Thunder Drake plus Contentious Plan is going to go off with these Flux Channelers as well. So I think I'm okay trading zombie army for Conjurance and the Giant Growth. And then we can just take three from the Grazer. I think that's okay. Alright, no Giant Growth. So maybe a bluff, maybe they forgot about Commence the Endgame, who knows. Either way, let us play some Channelers, I think. I guess we want to play one Channeler first in case we need to Divine Arrow and Proliferate. Could also play a Thunder Drake here, which is maybe better. Right, opponent double blocks, so we could just Divine Arrow now and kill both. Doesn't sound bad. And I'm gonna save the contentious plan until after we play the Drake. Sunblade Angel. Could play both channelers first and make like an, an enormous Thunder Drake. Doesn't seem needed. It's already gonna be pretty enormous. It's even debatable whether we should bother attacking Hotly here, but if they put it in their deck, it's probably gonna be decent for them. And next turn we're going to go off Channeler into plan. This Drake's going to be out of this world big. Crocodile. Alright, let's uh, go off here. All the triggers... Eh, why not? Could have played the Wanderer pre-combat, I suppose, to proliferate even more. Alright. See? The strategic play was not showing them the Wanderer. Alright, so against the green-white deck, um, they showed us some beefy creatures, so no escape could be decent. Uh, anything else that stands out? Don't think we need Transmutation. Dovin's Veto doesn't seem needed. And Augur is kind of small, so doesn't block all that well. Could maybe consider bringing in an extra Augur if we bring in two no escapes. Definitely want one of them. Uh, what do we think about Pegasus? Doesn't block all that well. Opponent seems to be a more aggressive deck. So it could be crazy, but I think we might want to cut Pegasus. Although Pegasus and then put a counter on it with Light Shield is a way to beat opposing flyers. But we should have enough ways to deal with opposing flyers, I think. I think we want to keep Light Shield just because it plays so well with the Flux Channelers and all the Contentious Plans. Could bring in a second No Escape, but we're on the draw. No Escape is a little bit slow on the draw sometimes. We'll try it. Hand looks great. Yeah, we could have also considered cutting a land for an extra Agro Bolas since we're on the draw now. And cutting a land when on the draw is more reasonable. There's a lot of tiny changes we could make that could slightly improve our deck. Probably not by much, but it's uh, fun to think about. Gonna keep this contentious plan since we already have a good turn 3 play here with Light Shield and Channeler. So no need to cantrip. Arlen's Wolf can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. 
All right, we'll have to make a big creature then. Do we channel her or do we light shield? So we can go light shield into advance into channeler plus plan. Then the channeler is going to be more unexpected. I guess that's fine. So we would like to pick up a fifth land at some point. Alright. So Teo plus Huatli is kind of a combo. So that explains why they have Huatli in their deck as well. I think we're advancing for now. We can always Prison Realm Huatli if the walls become an issue. Yeah, the walls don't lose Defender. So it's not as good as high alert, I guess. Tell me your story. So there's Watley. So the walls are still good on defense since they can deal extra damage. They made their wolf worse. So maybe they should have attacked first if they wanted to attack. I think they just uh, realized. All right, there's a land, perfect. So we could get greedy, play another light shield first, and then next turn go off. Yeah, why not? No attacks. That's fine. Watley is actually nerfing their wolf and their crocodile. Let's proliferate, shall we? Oh yes. Don't think we need to make any attacks yet. I'm just fine chilling here. So we want to keep Prison Realm and Divine Arrow to answer potential flying creatures that could be problematic. And any non-creature spell we find here is going to be pretty amazing with double channeler in play. Martyr for the cause. That's fine. Can proliferate when it dies. Would have been decent in our deck as well as just an early blocker. Oh yes. Two mana at... How much power and toughness to the board? Nine. Draw card. Topple the statue, tap our zombie. You got it. Not bad. We'll attack next turn once we get the zombie online. We could Divine Arrow here, but I don't want them to like quadruple block or light shield and kill it. Sunblade Angel, a good target for our removal spells. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I guess we don't actually want to kill Huatli since she's kind of helping us at the moment. Yeah, let's, let's be aggressive. Alright, they're gonna go for a double or triple block here. This is not gonna go well for them. So they're chump blocking with Martyr on one of them, and then triple blocking the other. So if we Divine Arrow, one of the walls, then the Light Shield still survives. Uh, I might have clicked through this by accident. Oh well. I meant to use the arrow there before damage, click through it a little bit too quickly. I think we'll be fine. Now we get to keep the arrow for the angel and prison realm for something else. So yeah, we should have killed the croc instead of the walls, of course. The plan was to divine arrow one of the walls and then save the, the light shield. Ugin's conjurance. That's fine. So the angel's attacking. We're divine arrowing it. So it might have been correct not to divine arrow one of the walls there. 
and just keep it uh, for the flyer. But we definitely should have killed the crocodile instead of a wall. That's for sure. Alright, Augur misses, but our opponent has seen enough. Well, that was quite uh, the beating there. Flux channelers going off. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, and looks pretty good. Got a light shield and channeler. Wanderer can trigger the channeler, and then Drake plays well with his hand as well if we pick up some more cheap cards. Turn 2 Dreadhorde Invasion. This is going to be hard to beat. Definitely one of the better rares, especially when played on 2. But we'll give it a shot here. The Wanderer plays pretty well against it, since we can just wait until the zombie gets big and then exile it. Evolution Sage, also a good one. It's going to help grow the zombie even faster. For now, I think we'll play the Light Shield. Just so we can uh, protect our life total a bit better. New Horizons, put a counter on Sage. Do they have a land as well? They don't. So we'll just take four. Alright, so we can use the Wanderer to exile the Sage. Might be reasonable. Or we could get greedy, play Channeler first, and then play the Wanderer so we can proliferate onto the Light Shield. Don't think we have time for that. Don't want the Sage to get more plus one plus one counters. And we'll definitely stay back here and hope they can kill the Light Shield. That Sprout sadly taking out our Light Shield, and now the Wanderer dies. Alright, not what we wanted to see here. Opponent also gets blue mana, so they're splashing for something. They missed a land drop earlier, so we know their hand is all action. And we're drawing a few too many lands ourselves. Play a Drake for now. Do I think Flux Chandler is too slow for standard? Yeah, probably. Center or Nurture. Yeah, the opponent having an answer for our wall there was a big swing. Augur Bolas isn't bad. And we even hit. We might want to Flux Channeler first. I guess we might as well attack. This would become a 5-5. Five, five. Don't really want to double block with Channeler and Drake. And we can block the Nurture with Augur if it attacks. So I think we can attack. And then Epiphany needs to draw us into a removal spell for the zombie. Alright, we'll take 5. Yeah, we might be able to keep pace with the army token if we make our Drake big enough. Well, there's a Prison Realm, that's a nice answer. Does not answer the enchantment, but can answer the zombie. A light Shield as well. Yeah, we probably need to Prison Realm the zombie. Buy ourselves more time. And another Flux Channeler, is that good enough? I don't think so, since we don't have any non-creature spells at the moment to trigger it. And one is probably enough for now. 
and then the Drake can attack for six. So we might be able to outrace them and turn the life loss into a, a big drawback here. Mobu plays well with our Sage here, if they can put a counter on it somehow. Conjurance, pretty good. So we would have lethal if we just cast two spells here, which we can accomplish by just playing Griffin and Light Shield. We could also play Conjurant at any number. Yeah, let's play Griffin into Light Shield. And then we didn't even have to put the counter on the Drake. We could just attack for seven, put the counter on the Griffin because the enchantment was going to kill them on their upkeep. And that way, if they did somehow have a removal spell for the Drake, we could still keep a bigger griffin to pressure them in the air. All right, so against Sultai, some removal spells, some plus one counter and proliferate synergies. How do we want to sideboard? Uh, do we have any answers for the Dreadhorde invasion? Transmutation doesn't help. Totally lost could be okay. It's not amazing, though. Could consider Dovin's Veto. It's a bit narrow, but it counters their invasion, although we're we're gonna be on the draw, so if they have a turn two, it's not good enough. And it can counter their Death Sprouts, which we've seen already. They might have some more impactful non-creature spells. I think I like Pegasus, since green is gonna have some beefy creatures on the ground, so we wanna fly over, like we did in the end of that game. So not sure what to take out. The Wanderer seems good. Could maybe cut a Narset on the draw, could be a bit slow. It's reasonable. Bring in a veto. Could also consider cutting a land for a second Augur Bolas now that we add another instant and that we're on the draw, we're more likely to hit our land drops. Think I'm gonna play it safe. Alright, what about this hand? Seems keepable on the draw. Need any third land to be able to cast two of our spells. Blue source gives us Augur on two, maybe. And then the Wanderer is gonna be pretty good. Conjurant, we might play on turn two. Depends whether or not we draw lands here. And Druid on two. Flux Channeler, alright, I think I'm down. And do we trade if they attack? I guess I'm okay with that. Alright, New Horizons means we don't get the choice. All right, third land gives us light shield. I think we put the counter on the light shield itself. And then attack with the conjurance. That way we have our counters spread out a bit more for proliferate purposes. And it forces them to put another counter on the druid, which plays into our wanderer plan. So we're hoping to hit a blue source here at some point. Mana geode. Scry one can help them fix their mana. And, alright, if we draw land here, we're in business. In my and they're even staying back, perfect. So max punished here. Could play the Flux Channeler first. Don't think that's worth it. Nurture. Playing Drake here seems fine, and then next turn if we draw land we can start growing it with like Augur and Channeler. Thunder Drake's pretty cool. Makes us discard too. Probably want to hang on to the Prism Realm. Augur can definitely go. And do we like Griffin more than Channeler? They're both quite good. I think I prefer Channeler. So I'll ditch the Griffin. There's also an argument for sandbagging the Channeler until we can play it in the Prison Realm in the same turn to grow the Drake. I think I'll still play it out here. Can attack first.
Uh, the discard spell makes us lose life, whereas the Wanderer prevents damage, and life loss and damage aren't quite the same thing. Evolution Sage. So we could play the Prison Realm. It's pretty tempting. Might be a little bit premature. Could also just chill and just attack with the Drake. Wait until we can play two spells in the same turn for Drake. I think we save it. Sage and Nurture aren't winning the game by themselves. They need something bigger, a big flyer maybe. And we're not under any pressure. I think I'll keep this land in hand in case of another discard spell, maybe a Davriel itself. Do have some card draw spells in the deck so we can get punished for sandbagging lands if we're unable to play a card draw spell, a land and then maybe a follow-up spell in the same turn. Opponent takes out our Flux Channeler before we could get any value, sadly. That's okay. We're still doing fine. They might be sandbagging some creatures that they don't want to play into the Wanderer. Nothing to proliferate. Alright, we're flooding out a little bit here. The discard too definitely came at the right time for the opponent. Oh yeah, we might also want to hold some lands for our 6 mana draw spell to make a bigger amass zombie. We also might want to play some spells after we draw too, so it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Weird can get back. Nothing. But once we do find a card draw spell, we're gonna go off here. Any contentious plans? We've got three. Our uh, four mana scry four draw two. Our six mana commence the end game. Would all be excellent draws. All right, I guess we'll keep a land in hand now. Nah, if I draw my four mana spell, I might wanna. Play it, sack the weird, and play the second time. And I doubt our opponent has two of this card in their deck. Alright, Flux Channeler. I mean, I'll play it, but I'm not gonna play the Prison Realm yet. Nothing has really changed as opposed to last time when we faced this decision. Yeah, I suspect they have at least one creature in hand that dies to the Wanderer. I guess, yeah, it's true. If they went, were sandbagging something big, then maybe they would have uh, just used Spark Harvest to kill the Wanderer instead. Makes some amount of sense as well. Right, a 4-6 Nurture. So we basically have to chum block it so we can then kill it next turn. Do we block with the Shield or the Conjurant? Probably the Conjurant. Well, now it might be worth it, although we l just lost one of our proliferate cards. I think I'm just gonna minus, kill the Nurture, play another Channeler, and then now if uh, they play another big creature, we can Prison Realm, get rid of the Sage, and then Wander, get rid of the other big creature they played, and start getting in there with our small creatures. Again, we're not in a hurry. And there we go. Now we get to really go off. Proliferate on our Planeswalkers and the Light Shield. And now we might be fine using the Prison Realm. Could also sack the Weir to replay the army a second time. Alright, opponent's just gonna concede. Not bad. 2-0 so far with our blue-white proliferate deck. Only two lands, but 
Can always cycle this plan. Got some good three mana plays, good four mana plays. And looks solid. I don't think we need to play the plan since we've got the lands now to play 3 drop, 4 drop. And we've got some nice proliferate targets with a Wanderer, Light Shield and Advance. So we might as well wait. Let's play this Light Shield. They might counter it. It's just a... Uh, a 1-4 here. If their counter spell is a no escape, they can't counter the advance or the plan. They can counter our planeswalker and the weird. Ooh, wow. Well, Kefnet is pretty good as it turns out. We can temporarily get rid of it with the Wanderer. And then this creature can put the Wanderer down to 2, and we can try and proliferate onto it to answer Kefnet uh, next time here. Next turn we can go Channeler plus Contentious Plan, could also Advance, then next turn Channeler Contentious Plan and then play Wander. I think we need to get rid of it. It is reasonable to wait to kill Kefnet until we've got a bit of a board presence, so we can pressure the opponents as soon as we remove Kefnet. The problem there is their opponent might have a no escape in their hand, so they might be able to counter the Wanderer if we wait on it. And uh, then we don't have any answer to Kefnet whatsoever. So we'll see how this plays out. Oh. You have left me alone. Sphinx returns the flyer. Alright, we get some uh, nice value here. So we get to Channeler, Contentious Plan, Proliferate twice, get rid of the Sphinx, and beat down. Sounds good to me. Let's make sure to tap our mana like a civilized person. Here, I'll make your Sphinx bigger too. I'm feeling generous. Alright, so Kefnut is going to return pretty quickly here, but uh, we've got a Flux Channeler to fuel our Wanderer, which is pretty nice here. Oh yeah, the Wanderer has been one of our best cards in both of the drafts we've had so far. Definitely undervalued it. I look forward to seeing your mistakes. Dovin pluses on Light Shield. Can withstand my careful scrutiny. This costs one more because of Dovin. Let's uh, pass the turn here. So Kefnet makes another appearance. My acute awareness of your imperfections is mad and a second worst creature. Alright. So the wonder is not going to be sustainable for long. You'll have to do better than that. Or maybe it is. Well, for this turn, we can only do one thing anyway, unless we want a Dismissal plus Weird. But I think playing another Advance, minusing on Kefnuts is probably fine. So I think we just Advance here. Minus... I guess if Dovin dies, we can still Dismissal to save the Wanderer. 
So this is targeted by Dovin. Um, I guess this can attack their face. Dovin down. So now we could dismiss all this creature, so the Wanderer stays in play for an extra turn, that might be worth it. Since we still have the Weir to get back the uh, dismissal as well. Could also dismiss our own Wanderer if we wanted to, and then sandbag it until uh, they replay Kefnet. Could have been good too. But now we're forcing them in this weird situation where they kind of want to attack with this creature, but they're so far behind on board. And at the ferry. Alright, that can answer our zombie token, sadly. So that was a good one. Thunder Drake. Let us attack their face with a light shield and the ferry with channeler. Yeah, lots of back and forth. Kefnet coming down next turn is going to be an issue. Alright, got a blocker for his creatures now. So they might still have a counterspell in hand for all we know. They haven't really had the chance to cast it yet. They can kill the Wanderer if they want to, but then they're pretty exposed on the way back. Weird can get back or bounce spell to bounce Kefnet. So they might be dead if they try and kill the Wanderer. Don't worry, I got this. And the Light Shield can keep attacking even into Kefnet here, since they only have six power total. Yeah, we don't want them to bounce the Light Shield. That would indeed be pretty bad. Alright, let's eat this creature here. So if their play is just Kefnet, that's not good enough. They need something else too. I think we just get back this missile here. Alright, and our opponent's dead, so we managed to beat a Kefnet. Thanks to our Wanderer, doing a lot of work. Alright, so against blue-white flyers and planeswalkers, how do we want to sideboard? Uh, no escape is probably our best answer to Kefnet, since that counters it for good. Transmutation would also be an answer. Don't want to overboard, but uh, those are potential considerations. What don't we like? Pegasus is probably still good enough, even though they have all those 1-3 flyers. Narset could maybe go... Like, I don't expect the Wanderer to always be amazing, because Kefnet might be one of their few targets. So despite it being a great card in the previous game, it might still be cuttable, since we're bringing in more answers for Kefnet. Yeah, Wanderer's still probably good enough. Yeah, probably want the Transmutation, and then at least one No Escape, but then we need to make some more cuts here. One no escape on the draw, maybe bring in the second one on the play. Maybe cut an Augur Bolas. Always misses anyway. Could have also considered cutting a land on the draw, would have been reasonable too. This hand could work out if we draw a white source soon. Get to go Conjurant into hopefully Channeler and then some spells. Start proliferating, maybe play a light shield first if we find a white source first. It's probably good enough. How has Relentless Advance performed? Well, we've had two nice Flux Channeler decks so far, so Advance is pretty good in any Proliferate Heavy deck. Opponent with the Strix, so they're pretty serious about the Flyers. Alright, we get to play Conjurant. Hopefully we hit a land drop. If we don't, we can still Proliferate onto the Conjurant here, which isn't bad. Yeah, we're not well set up to deal with uh, Turn 4 Kefnet. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Alright, opponent's gonna keep up their mana here. 
I think we'll probably just play the Light Shield, which if they want to counter it, that's fine by me. Could attack first with the Conjurance. Alright, no counter spells. Put counter on Light Shield itself for Proliferate. So hopefully no Kefnuts. But we've got a decent start here. Probably played a Channeler first. Could always play Pegasus to have a blocker for the Strix temporarily. Although if they play a spell, that's no longer the case. They've got their own Pegasus. Alright. The race is on. I think we play Channeler, and then next turn we can kind of go crazy with the uh, Proliferate Synergies. Opponent doesn't have double blue, so they could still have Kefnet in hand for all we know. And I think Conjurant is fine to attack, and so is a Light Shield. I doubt they trade for Pegasus. Could be reasonable to advance first, hoping to draw land next turn so we get to go Channeler into Contentious Plan. But now we also have the option of Contentious Plan plus Dismissal, while the Flux Channeler is in play. Opponent attacks. No escape could be a good answer to a Kefnet, but can't really keep it up at the moment. So yeah, now we could Dismissal into Contentious Plan and hit them for a bunch. And a Wanderer, nice. Well, the Ugin's Conjurance started out as a small 2-2 creature, but uh, it has experienced quite a journey since then. And that 1-1 one, one mass token didn't stay 1-1 one, one for very long. It's got us little friends in the background. Yeah, Flux Channeler is a scary card. And that plus Contentious Plan is pretty strong. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. So we got there. Alright. The clean sweep continues. And we're on the draw with a reasonable looking hand. Hopefully Augur doesn't miss. And then we can always play an early conjurant if we have to. This missile can buy us a bit of time. Alright, turn 1, Law Rune Enforcer. Interesting to note, Law Rune Enforcer doesn't tap down Conjurant, since converted mana cost is 0. Did pick up the land, so that's nice. Red-white, alright. Could be a nice focused aggro deck. Which could be hard to beat. Yep, turn 2, Pouncing Lynx. Luckily, our uh, Augur Bolas is gonna hold the fort like a champ. And draws a card, right? Yeah, Augur never misses. Probably don't have time for more card draw. Probably just take the advance here. And I'm not gonna play a 0 0 Conjurant. Thank you very much. Alright, Augur gets tapped down. Next turn we can play a Light Shield as another good blocker. So things are going pretty well thanks to. Some nice uh, top decks. Opponents maybe got a removal spell here. Jaya's greeting. Alright, fair enough. At least now the relentless advance is gonna survive. And advance also can be tapped down by Enforcer since the token has converted mana cost zero. So I'll take another two. Ooh, Pegasus. That was bad news. Well, I guess uh, we gotta use the Prison Realm on the Pegasus here. Since the Pegasus we can't really ignore. And we might as well Prison Realm now. Instead of playing the Advance first. And... Do we want a land? So this turn we're playing a land, next turn... What's the difference between 4 and 5 mana? It's not that big. And Planes also doesn't let us go Narset plus Dismissal, so I think we bottom. Hope to draw some more removal spells in case they have more Pegasus coming up. Yep, 
Yeah, an extra land is a, an extra counter on the Conjurance, which could be okay, but... We're gonna draw an Island anyway. Yeah, I think I'll play a big Conjurant here, why not? Can't tap it down with Enforcer, so we have a blocker for the Lynx. If they combine a removal spell, plus a Lynx, they could take out Conjurant, I suppose. Not a Lynx. No attacks, alright. Conjurant holds the fort. Probably want to add some more stuff to the board before leveraging our card advantage with Narset here. Just play an advance for now. No need to dismissal anything. Stamp our mana a bit better. Sadly, dismissal is a sorcery, so we can't have it up at uh, instant speed. But uh, for now, we don't have to bounce anything. So flying creatures here would be a problem. So hopefully Narset can draw us into a removal spell. And Enforcer can only tap down Augur Bolas here. So our creatures weirdly lining up well against the Enforcer. Battalion. That's fine. And our own Pegasus. Excellent. So is it the Narset time? I think so. Narset plus Pegasus seems good. Contentious plan. Looking good. I think we still add another creature to the board first here. Things aren't looking so bad. Opponent's kind of out of juice, we're still at 13. I've got a lot of card draw left in hand. Alright, not a Pegasus. That's not what we wanted to see. Can temporarily bounce it with a Dismissal, or we can play our Griffin, which is pretty good too. Although they can tap that down with the Enforcer. Let's see what we can find first. Meditate. The Wanderer. Probably not the best in this matchup, although it can save our creatures from burn spells. So what's the plan? Is it a contentious plan, maybe? See what we find. And then maybe dismissal the Pegasus. Or we can play Enforcer, stay back. So if we play Enforcer, what does our opponent do? They tap down Enforcer, and then in their turn tap down the other flyer, and they get in there with Battalion Pegasus, maybe something else. Doesn't seem great for us. I think we need to find an answer here. So go to combats, see what they do. So we could still play the Griffin, or we could bounce the Pegasus. And then we're taking five, and then next turn we can maybe dismissal and... I mean, I guess it's not bad since Enforcer tapped down two flyers this turn, because it didn't have to tap during their turn. But as soon as it starts tapping in their turn, they can only tap down one flyer at a time. So I think this is reasonable. So what are we looking for here? I guess our Divine Arrow to kill Pegasus would be good. We do want to start attacking them at some point, since we can't stay back on defense forever. They're probably going to take out Narset. Puts us to 10. And the Wanderer Strike. Getting rid of our 6-6, six -six, that's too bad. Could always bounce the Enforcer as well, so they can't tap down anything for a couple turns. Alright, let's advance first. Could attack with the Griffin, but I think we want the Griffin back to block Pegasus and Battalion. And we can then just dismissal the Enforcer so they can't tap down anything for a couple turns. This seems safer to me. I guess we should have probably cast this missile first then. Because we were going to hit for one more. So yeah, we, we should have hit them for one more here. Could definitely end up mattering since we have uh, 10 damage with Pegasus and the zombie. And they're at 11 now, instead of at 10. Alright, opponent scoops it up, so we got there anyway. So didn't get punished for that uh, small misstep there. Alright, so red-white aggro, we definitely got lucky to draw our Augur Bolas early and not miss with it. Since we ended up needing most of our cards. Still don't think we need a giant. This is too slow. This seems bad. So we don't have much to bring in other than maybe an extra Agrobolas. 
We're on the draw, so we could get greedy and cut a land. Could cut the Narset, although she was pretty good there. But maybe that's because we got lucky to have the early blockers. Don't have many flyers to block their Pegasus. I mean, maybe transmutation for Pegasus is good enough, just so they don't gain flying. I guess that's reasonable. And then maybe cut Narset, since we're on the draw as well. Channeler could also be a little bit too slow here. The Wanderer doesn't seem great. They didn't show as many big creatures. Maybe they had one in hand at the end of the game, but never played it out because we had a Wanderer in hand that they knew about. Can prevent the Reds' removal spells from dealing damage to our creatures. I think I'm going to lean towards cutting it, and then we can see whether we want to bring it back. Just as low to the ground as possible. Double Augur Bolas, still 17 lands to play it safe. So, got a nice curve in the previous game. Let's see if we can uh, do the same here. Now it commands in our opening hands, not ideal since it's a 6-drop that we're not going to cast anytime soon. Our hand seems keepable though on the draw, two islands, so we need any third land. And then we can cast most of our spells. Got a transmutation for Pegasus. Don't have an early blocker for Lynx sadly, but... Don't have many of those outside of Augur. No links, alright. Maybe our opponent slowed down after sideboard a little bit. And now that we picked up the lands, I don't think we need to cycle the plan. Since plan's also a nice cantrip to go alongside Thunder Drake to let us cast two spells in the same turn. Maybe go transmutation plus plan. Ooh, spell gorge are weird. If we go channeler, we can go channeler into Drake into transmutation plus plan. If we don't play the channeler now, then we miss out on a bit of proliferate value. I think I channel her right now. Might be a little bit of a greedy play, since now they can attack with a weird. But they were going to attack with a weird anyway, and then we had to decide whether or not we wanted to run into a pump spell or a burn spell. Yeah, the transmutation stops the ability from the weird from happening, but any counters that are already on the weird would stay on it. Battalion. Alright. I think we're playing the Drake and then take a big hit and then next turn we can stabilize nicely with transmutation and plan, hopefully. Could also attack with the channeler if they trade it with battalion, that's fine by me. Like the channeler's more valuable than the battalion, but our opponents the aggro deck, they want to preserve their early creatures. And now we gotta hope the Drake survives. If it does, then we're in great shape. If it doesn't, then we might be a little bit behind. Alright, looks like it's dead. Alright, so our plan didn't really pan out. Now we can play Weird plus Transmutation at least. Or an Augur as well. We're also getting close to the end game here, which is nice. I think we shrink the battalion for now. Play weird as a blocker. No attacks. But if they have more tricks or removal spells, it's not looking good. If we draw land for end game. That's going to be sweet, with Plan and Channeler. Weird attacks. Yeah. Alright, Battlefield Promotion, the Martyr. Fair enough. Alright, well, we were going to run into that at some point. And a Pegasus. Now Pegasus is an issue. And now we regret using Transmutation earlier. Yeah, if they didn't have Pegasus, it wouldn't be so bad, because we get to end game, maybe ambush one of their creatures. Now with Pegasus, that's no longer an option. So we go to Augur, hope to draw into like a Divine Arrow, or end game anyway, and ambush the Martyr, and then hope to draw into an answer for Pegasus the turn after. Yeah, we could have used Transmutation on the Weird sooner, but that would have still not uh, answered the Pegasus problem. I wanted to keep Transmutation for Pegasus more than anything. So we get to... ...commence the endgame. Let's not proliferate. Take 
take six, down to six. And then we need to top deck. If we can uh, deal with the Pegasus, we might be okay. Well, it's kind of an answer, I suppose. So if we play Griffin, Pegasus and Weird Attack, we block Pegasus, take five, down to one. But then we're stable. No pun intended. Yeah, I mean, that might be the play. Yeah, any spell triggering the weird kills us, but not much we can do there. It's not like we have a ton of removal spells for Pegasus that we can find off Augur. I think we play the Griffin and go to one here. Could play Conjurant as a 1-1. One -one. Don't know if that does much for us. I think we can wait. The extra blocker on the ground doesn't make a huge difference. Alright, topple the statue so we were dead. Alright. Well, good to know. A removal light deck is gonna struggle against Trusted Pegasus, sadly. Another weird. Well, we got to see a bit more of their deck, at least. So the Wanderer is probably gonna come back in since it answers the Spellgorger weirds pretty well. What do we take out? Maybe an Augur Bolas doesn't block Spellgorger all that well. We saw two links in the first game, but uh, Augur doesn't line up all that well against everything they played in this game. So I could see cutting one. Totally lost could also be a temporary answer, although it's only a temporary answer for Pegasus. Now that we're on the play, we could consider no escape. Maybe go on double Augur Bolas to block their uh, early two drops and then try and no escape their Pegasus. Could be reasonable too. It is awkward to keep up though. Yeah, I think I shave a channeler for a no escape here. Now that we're on the play. Alright, let's try this. Hmm, that's rough. Can't keep a one lander, sadly, even with double contentious plan. Can we really afford to go to five here? This hand is pretty bad. We've got commands the endgame in our opener. Basically need to draw five lands in a row. Don't think this is gonna do it. <laughs> keep having one landers with commands the endgame. Well, I don't think we can win on four, so I guess we'll keep. Well, we tried. Alright, we had a loss to give. And I think this is probably one of our worst matchups. A uh, fast aggro deck with enforcers, few well-timed removal spells and combat tricks. It's gonna give us a bit of trouble, especially with all those copies of Pegasus. So if we were gonna lose to a deck, it was probably this one. Oh boy, <laughs> Agorabolas, rubbing in the salts in the wound. Alright, you got it. Alright, well, aggro decks are still a thing, even in this format, so watch out for those. Alright, there's our lands. Can keep this. Yeah, the London Mulligan for Limited cannot come quickly enough. Yay, we hit. So we're just looking for more proliferates, synergies here to go with her channeler. Next turn, play advance, and then go off with contentious plans. New horizons. That's fine. 
They're not even attacking, valuing their Crawl Stinger highly. Well, as it turns out, our Channeler's probably better. They know about the Divine Arrow, which makes it a lot less effective than it would normally be. So we've got to watch out for pump spells in response. Opponents on red as well. Alright, Ceratok. That's fine. Trample plus Death Touch means they only need to assign one damage to a blocker and they can trample over for the rest, but they decide to stay back. And oh boy. This uh, zombie token's gonna grow pretty quickly. Two mana, put three plus one plus one counters on the creatures, draw a card. So, not a bad effect. Just gonna stay back for now. Play defense, plan some more. Ideally we find something else we can play next turn that comes with a plus one plus one counter. A light shield, for example. The wonder would be one of our best draws. Exile the Ceratok, proliferate and exile some more stuff afterwards. And it looks like band together. Taking out our zombie, sadly. All right, we'll have to rebuild. We've got the technology. Can always block with the Augur and then Divine Arrow to finish off the Ceratok here. Starting to flood out a little bit. All right, there's a Light Shield, the turn late, sadly. I guess we can play Light Shield, take a beating from Ceratok and then next turn Divine Arrow and proliferate a bunch. It's probably fine here. And then do we put the counter on the Light Shield itself or the Augur? Probably the Light Shield since we want to block plus Divine Arrow with Augur. And I don't think I want to put a counter on the Channeler itself. Alright, well, we could be in a bit of trouble here. Our hand's not very good. If we draw any of our draw spells, commence the endgame, Epiphany. The Wanderer would be great. Ooh. Challenger Troll's pretty scary too. So now, no double blocking allowed. And more lands. Alright, well. Didn't know about Divine Arrow. Probably want to start sandbagging a few lands in case we draw commands the endgame. Counter on Troll. And uh, more counters. Yeah, this is scary. Opponent proliferates on all their targets here. So we're probably not winning this game unless we draw well from here. Troll and Ceratok attack. So what's our plan? We can arrow the Troll and then take 6 from Ceratok. Hope to draw Wanderer. It's probably the way to go. More light shields. Well, at least we can take out the planeswalker here. We'll see a new path. Think I'm gonna keep lands in hand. It's close. Like if we draw end game, we want lands in hand. If we draw epiphany, or maybe contentious plan, then we might want to play them out. I guess we should have maybe attacked with the channeler and keep the Augur Bolas back to chum block since we're taking 10 here. Would rather chump with an Augur than a light shield. Well, this isn't uh, this isn't going according to plan. This is probably not good enough. We can double block Stinger, jump Ceratok, take four, then we're still dead. 
Probably wasn't even worth it to show them. Another Courage in Crisis, so a lot of proliferate going on there too. Double Courage, Band Together, Troll. More counters here, proliferate. So, yeah, there's just no way we survive here, right? The transmutation could be decent. Shrink their creature into a 1-1. One -one. Doesn't help if they put counters on their creatures. Because those stay and they still get to proliferate. So it's only going to help us so much. The Wanderer is really the card we want to draw the most. No escape is coming in since they've got some expensive creatures. Could consider the Dam Breaker just as a, a big body to put in play. Augur Bolas is a little bit on the weak side. 1-3 doesn't block all that well. Dismissal is okay against all the proliferate and plus one plus one counters floating around. Light shield is kind of mediocre, doesn't block all their big stuff. Pegasus can help us fly over. So this could be one sideboard approach. Uh, I don't think we want Vito. It's okay against their removal spell. But are we really countering their plus one plus one counter cards? Don't think so. It's the creatures that are the problem, not the proliferate cards. I guess it's okay against uh, Wanderer Strike, which they showed us near the end there. Which is a, an expensive removal spell we can counter. So uh, Vito's somewhat a consideration, I suppose. Arrow is also not amazing. They've also seen it now. So they can play around it. But I think we just need more removal. And the Channeler can help us go bigger than their creatures, potentially. So I think we keep those in. Right, let's try this. Be on the play. And looks reasonable. Basically all our removal spells here. So if we can keep their creatures off the board, then their proliferate cards don't do much. Opponent may be getting punished for their three color mana base a little bit. And drew it. Yeah, I think we need to counter this. Help us cry lands to the bottom. Channeler doesn't do a whole lot, but I guess we'll still play it here. We could have also considered letting the Raptor resolve and then Divine Arrow the Druid when it attacks as a 3-3 and keep the counterspell for a bigger creature. Could have been fine too. Right, Courage in Crisis, so now the Divine Arrow is looking good. If we can uh, convert it. Conjurance, 5-5. Five, five. Not bad. So this is a much better draw. Stays back. So we could apply the pressure with Prison Realm, could just attack with Conjurant and then keep up Divine Arrow. Could even attack with Channel or Divine Arrow, but then we could get punished by a pump spell. Let's just attack with the Conjurants, see what they do. Takes five. And hope to Divine Arrow the Druid here before it picks up any more counters. Pegasus. Druid attacks. Let's go for it. Alright. Back on track, and there's endgame. That's where we need it. We're fine if they want to trade. We can endgame before damage to grow the conjurant one more. And this should be game. Alright. Well, our opponent mulligan this time. So it wasn't a, a real game, sadly. So any changes for game 3? Didn't really get a ton of new information. Think I'm okay with our sideboard plan. No escape gets a little bit worse now that we're on the draw. 
Maybe Pegasus is a reason to want transmutation back in the deck. Yeah, totally lost can have its moments against uh, plus one plus one counters. If they load up on one creature, we can bounce it. Could see bring it in instead of the transmutation then. And what's coming out? Maybe Narset's too slow on the draw. We'll try this. Divine Arrow into Channeler into Drake looks good. So this is interesting. We could play Conjurant for two and then Curve Channeler into Drake, but Conjurant also plays well after we play the Drake to let us proliferate. So I think I'm waiting. We also might just want to play a bigger Conjurant on turn 5. That's a good draw. So now we can go Drake and then turn 5 Conjurant into Contentious Plan, grow the Drake, grow the Conjurant. Think I'm attacking. All right, so far so good. Mowu, just a three-three at the moment with trample and vigilance, but could get a lot bigger next turn. Well, it's time to go off here. Five six Drake, not bad. Can get in there. Hopefully the Drake survives, and the next turn we get to add to the board with Griffin or keep up no escape. They could put some counters on Mowu and then band together to kill the Drake. New Horizons pretty good here. So now band together kills the Drake. Courage in Crisis, alright, well. That's a pretty big Mowu. Taking 11. Ooh, that was a key top deck. So are they just dead now? 12, yeah they are. Could even... Uh, cast Divine Arrow on our own creature to grow our team. It's not going to be needed though. Alright, pretty key Prisoner Realm there, getting rid of Mowu. And we get to keep playing, sweet. Alright, 4 and 1, let's see if we can win the finals. Alright, so any third land lets us play Pegasus and Light Shield. And then two lands, including a blue source, let us play everything. Think we keep. Turn one Bane Hound. Right, so our opponent knows something we don't. Got the third land lined up. Can just play a light shield. And shut down the Bane Hound for the time being. Red Black. Operative. Can be blocked by creatures with power 4 or greater. That's fine. Alright, no island so far, but at least we're hitting our land drops, which is good. We're just one island away from a pretty strong hand. Silverwing. 2-3. Looks at our top card here. Hopefully it's an island. There we go. Alright, so I think we want to play the Drake, and then next turn we might be able to double spell Epiphany plus Augur. So we've got the flying defense. Don't think I'm blocking the Silverwing if they attack with it. Don't want to lose a Drake. 
Right, it's gonna be a spark harvest to kill it anyway here. Fair enough. Alright, I guess we'll be trading 2 damage for 2 damage for a while. Flux Channeler. I think I like Epiphany here. Make sure we don't miss our land drops. Arrow seems good. And another advance seems good. Bottomed Island, or the plains there. Alright, and then I'm gonna keep up Divine Arrow, I think. Although we could play Augur and make sure we draw the Relentless Advance. Might be better. That way we don't miss. Alright, and we might have missed, although we don't know what the next card was gonna be. Alright, so we got our Augur value. Seems good. Silverwing gets in. Giant 4-5. Opponent loses a life and draws a card. Pretty good. And they draw the land. So we can both play a channeler and the advance. So we can go a channeler into advance and then proliferate onto the light shield. And yeah, we ended up drawing a land. So if we didn't play Augur, we were going to miss if we were going to wait a turn. Think these can attack, although maybe we keep Light Shield back for the, the Giant here. Just attack with Augur and hit them for three. And the good thing is they don't know about the Divine Arrow. Ooh, Chandra. And they even found a land right away. So Chandra's gonna deal some, quite a bit of damage here, but we can pressure the Planeswalker with our Pegasus. Let's advance. And then Pegasus and the zombie can attack Chandra, put on blocks Pegasus with Silverwing, we kill it with Divine Arrow. Could also go after their life total, but killing the Planeswalker seems reasonable. I am out of here. And I think I'll keep the land in hand for commence the endgame. We did end up taking quite a bit of damage from this Chandra, but that's okay. Let's keep on attacking. Think I'm still keeping lands in hand for commands. Should be able to double spell if we draw a cantrip. And that does it, sweet. Alright, so Pegasus. Pretty key there. So against the red black, pretty aggressive looking Chandra. Um, they had the six drop creature as well. They did cast a Spark Harvest on the Thunder Drake as well. So Spark Harvest, Chandra, maybe we want the Dovin's Veto. Uh, maybe we want no escape to counter Chandra and their expensive creatures, although they seem pretty aggressive with all the one drops and two drops. So don't want to overboard expensive cards. Uh, Augur seems solid as just an early blocker. So how about we bring in another Augur? This time we're on the draw, so we can maybe get greedy and cut a land. And then bring in a Dovin's Veto. And take out an Arset. So now we have an extra instant or sorcery for Augur as well. And Wanderer still had plenty of targets there with the six drop. Alright, we'll uh, try this. This hand seems okay. We'll need to draw some lands. Having endgame in our opener is not ideal. But uh, can make some early plays. The turn on Banehound once again. Not sure if they have any synergy with this, because this isn't a particularly strong card otherwise. Alright, well. I guess I'm fine uh, bouncing the operative here. Might be premature, but don't want to take too much damage. Token can block the Banehound. We do have a Weird coming down next turn, which blocks their stuff. But this seems okay. I 
We've got to commence the end game so we don't mind trading resources, even if it's trading down a little bit. Well, Toll of the Invasion might take away our end game. But we can get it back with a weird, so it's not that bad. It's actually interesting whether they attack here, because the Channeler threatens to grow the zombie army some more. I think I'm playing Channeler before Weird, in case we need to proliferate right away. I should have played the planes there, since I didn't know about islands. No need to give them any additional information. Opponent just replay some creatures. Conjurance, not bad. So we could play a 4 4 Conjurance. I guess the timing's a little awkward. So we have to play the weird this turn in case we want to play Commence the End Game on 6 if we draw land. Because if we don't play the weird this turn, we can't sack it until turn 6, and then it's too late to play End Game on Curve. So I think we play the weird for now. And then we'll see whether or not we want to play Contra next turn or sack the weird, get back endgame. Alright, Thirst kills Flux Channeler, that's okay. And there's a land. So we'll uh, play the planes this time and pass a turn. I would rather just keep up Divine Arrow and save Contra for later. So here we can Chum block with the weird and sack it. It's pretty good in the face of assault team, or we can just block it with our 1 1. Assault team attacks. Yeah, I'm fine trading. I think I actively want to trade, even though we could get a free block with the weird anyway. Trade our 1 1 for their 4 drop, basically. They get a counter somewhere. That's fine. No need to Divine Arrow. And since it doesn't have Trample, double blocking doesn't really accomplish anything. Alright, let's get back our end game. Play a land, say go. And we can make a 5-5 here, which is pretty big. Next turn, play a Giant Conjurance. Alright, so they must have some instant speed removal. Let's find out what it is. Cruelty, so... Yeah. Our opponent should have maybe uh, put a stop or gone full control, so they could Cruelty or Token before blockers. Because now we got a free block and prevented two damage, basically. So do we want to play Conjurant, or do we play Augur plus Advance? I think Augur plus Advance is fine. That way, if they have a spot removal spell, they might waste it on the Advance instead of a giant Conjurant. Contentious plans, looking good. Say go. Alright, opponent's getting in there. So, let's see, what tricks do we need to play around? I don't know if I want to block with the zombie token since we're gonna proliferate soon. Could be the Soren's Thirst that we saw in the previous game. I guess I'm fine. If they uh, cast one of those here. Alright, it's just the Soren's Thirst, so that was fine. Got a 2 for 1 and got to kill their zombie for free. Could have been a Vraska's finisher, but that would have been an okay trade as well, I think. Alright, Crunch is pretty big. Can just play a big Conjurance. Seems fine here, 8-8. Eight, eight. Could have played Conjurant for 6, keep up Arrow, but Conjurant... Given that it uh, kind of shrinks down over time, I think I want to make it as big as possible. And if they hit us with the crunch, it's not the end of the world, we're still at 13. Alright, so they're fine shrinking down a conjurant, basically. Is what they're saying. It's 
So let's uh, plan first. Trusted Pegasus. It's not a bad one. Let's get in there. Opponent is at 28, so they've got quite a bit of life total to work with. Since we played our end game already, I'm fine playing out my lands in case we need to double spell and draw more card draw effects. Yeah, I think we killed the Silverwing. Flyers are kind of a weakness of our deck, so we're gonna have to answer it at some point. Herald of the Dreadhorde, it's okay. Let's proliferate some more. Griffin's not bad, so we can hit them for 8 in the air. Seems good. Play Griffin. Griffin blocks Heralds. Augur blocks Operative. And they're dead in two turns. And there we go. Sweet. So, managed to come back and get all the way to five wins. So, we drafted pretty much the same archetype twice in a row, going 5 1 twice here. So, the Proliferate deck seems pretty sweet. Flux Channelers seem to go pretty late in the draft, so the bots maybe don't respect it as much as they should. And then uh, the plan, letting us draw and proliferate, was pretty sweet. Just got to make sure we have enough things to proliferate onto. Had a few draws where we didn't quite uh, get enough plus one, plus one counters or loyalty counters in play. And then the plans and the channelers were a little bit lackluster. I think maybe our previous deck had a slightly better mix of uh, counters since we had more planeswalkers as well. We got lucky to open Gideon and Teferi in that one. So we had more planeswalkers to proliferate onto which was pretty sweet. All right, let's claim our prize. Crack some packs. So if this were a pack one, pick one. Mizium tank, I'm not sure how good it is yet. Seems somewhat medium to me. I think Pegasus is probably a safer bet. Lauren Enforcer is also great. Devil's also pretty good in the right archetype but probably leaning towards one of the white cards since they don't commit us to a second color yet. Deliver onto evil, nothing special. Um, yeah, not a great pack. There's a finisher, which is okay, and a griffin, which is okay. Probably take those over the deliver onto evil. Mobilized District, pretty nice to have a land that does something. Both Jaya and Kazmin are both excellent. Difficult to choose between the two. We seem to open these two Planeswalkers in the same pack pretty often, at least in the small packs here. And then band together, a great removal spell as well. But yeah, it's got to be one of the two Planeswalkers, I think, over the District. Tamiya's pretty fun. Don't know how good it is in Limited, it's still fine, but uh, not as good as in Constructed maybe, where you've got more 4-offs and are more likely to hit with a plus 1. Although of course we're only dealing with 40 card decks instead of 60, so if you can draft uh, a playset of a card, then Tamiya gets even better. What else do we have? Evolution Sage can be quite strong. Plan for the plan deck, but don't have to t pick that early. Some other playable cards as well. Blast Zone, pretty nice card for Constructed. In Limited, it's still fine. If your mana base can afford it, you can definitely sneak that in there. Otherwise, not the best pack. Dreadhorde Twins is pretty solid. Uh, Finisher is okay. Another Deliver onto Evil. Ral's Outburst is a nice one, although it does commit you to two colors from the start, which you don't always want to do, but the power level is definitely there. Sartok is just a beefy creature, nothing special. Overall, not the best pack. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.